How can one prevent PAD, CAD, and diabetes? An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Everyone's heard this adage, my grandmother would tell it to me. So when it comes to chronic diseases like peripheral arterial disease and its close cousin, coronary artery disease, and diabetes, which is related to these two diseases, um, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. What can you do now, early in life, late in life, whenever, to help prevent these diseases or prevent them from getting worse, or in some cases, actually even reverse them? It's a great question. The number one answer, my number one answer, would be modifying what you eat. Nutritional modification. Notice I didn't say diet. Counting calories and that stuff doesn't work long term. Modify what you eat, and this is how, this is the rule that I would recommend to you. Eat what nature provided us. Eat what your ancestors ate 10,000 years ago. Your great-grandfather 10,000 years ago had certain foods available, and that's what he ate. What were those foods? Meat, eggs, vegetables, and occasional seasonal fruit. That's it. He didn't have processed foods, right? You probably heard that term a lot. What does that mean, processed foods? Well, it means anything that nature doesn't give us. Nature gives us meat, eggs, vegetables, and fruit. Everything else in the grocery store that you see in boxes, uh, in packages, freeze-dried, sliced up, um, that's all processed food. And taking that from its natural state to its processed state, it goes through a long kind of process at food manufacturers. Chemicals are added, things are done to it, things are changed to it, it's changed. So when you consume that, you're not consuming natural food. The body's not designed to handle those processed foods. So when you eat those processed food, things happen. And those things that happen long-term are the things we're talking about. Diabetes, PAD, CAD, high cholesterol, high lipids, strokes. This is the number one thing you can do. Avoid processed foods, eat natural foods. Meat, eggs, vegetables, and occasional fruit. You know what that means? Sugar, no, no, no. I know it tastes good, but it's addictive and it's not good for you. Avoid sugar. Avoid processed carbohydrates. What do I mean? Bread, pasta, cookies, cakes, cupcakes, cereal, all of that is terrible. Terrible stuff and it causes disease. Even avoid processed meats, right? Those deli sliced meats. That's not how meat comes in the real world. Steak, a fish fillet, a chicken breast, that's how it comes in nature. Those sliced meats are pretty far away from natural meat. So if you want a general rule to prevent chronic disease, diabetes, PAD, CAD, most of chronic disease these days, modify what you eat and eat what nature provided us. Meat, eggs, vegetables, occasional fruit. Now why am I saying occasional fruit? Is a fruit okay? Can't we eat as much as we want? Yes and no. Think about your grandfather 10,000 years ago. Did he have fruit year round? He did not. He had it a few months out of the year. It was seasonal, right? And it wasn't as big and juicy and sweet as it is these days, right? The fruit you see at the grocery store, you know, we get it year round now, it's by food manufacturers. They modify it to make it a little more red, a little more sweet, a little more bright. Again, nothing wrong with that. I'm not vilifying fruit, but our ancestors only had it in limited amounts for a few months out of the year. We should follow that. Don't go overboard with fruit. You can have it, don't go overboard. And if you have diabetes or you're obese, I would avoid fruit. I would avoid fruit. You don't want to spike your blood sugar and your insulin. If you're o o overweight or obese or have diabetes, I would stick to meat, eggs, and vegetables. If you're not those things, you can have some fruit, but you know, don't go crazy with it. So this is the number one thing you could do. Modify what you eat to prevent these diseases, PAD, CAD, diabetes, uh, and and or stop them from getting worse, and in many cases, reverse them, okay? That's number one, nutritional modification. Modify what you eat. Number two, don't smoke, and if you smoke, quit smoking. I know it's easier said than done. Do what you can, quit smoking. It's very harmful to your arteries and your body. Number three, uh, I would say activity. I used to say exercise, but I don't say exercise anymore because exercise, sometimes people get visions of like the biggest loser TV show, eight hours of brutal exercise, all day long. And that's not really what you need to do. What did your ancestors do? They were active all day. 
They didn't sit at a desk for 10 hours and then sit in the couch and watch TV. They constantly moved throughout the day. They walked, they climbed a little, they picked up some stuff here and here, here and there, they stretched. Try and do that. You don't need to be an Olympic weightlifter or a bodybuilder. Just stay active. If you have a sedentary job like I do, get up frequently, move, walk around, stretch, run some, play some, get outdoors in the sun. These things are excellent. So be active. You don't have to do a brutal exercise regimen to be in good health. 80% of your health and disease prevention is what you eat, like we talked about earlier. Eat like your ancestors did. It's called the paleo diet. I hesitate to use terms like this because it's not really a diet. You can eat as much as you want if you eat from those foods. 80% of who you are and your health and disease prevention is determined by what you eat. Smoking, of course, is a big one. It's yes or no. You smoke and it raises the risk of a lot of things. So try and quit. Probably 20% is your level of activity or quote unquote exercise. So these are my three big rules for disease prevention. PAD, CAD, diabetes, cholesterol, lipids, stroke, cancer. First and foremost, modify what you eat. Eat what your ancestors did. Meat, eggs, vegetables, limited fruit if you're not diabetic or obese. Number two, don't smoke or quit smoking. Number three, stay active.